If you want one word of advice from me, forget about self-esteem and concentrate on self-control. Self-control is the real deal. I was very gung-ho on studying self-esteem for a while, and then I realized after about a decade that it's not such an important key. It's really secondary in, in many crucial ways. As, as we've seen, it doesn't really do that much for you. On the other hand, self-control measured at one point leads to much greater success later on. So when you have your own children, or if you become a teacher or a coach or, or whatever, when you're trying to improve for the young people, work on improving their self-control, not their self-esteem. That's what's going to be better for your child, your students, your athletes, uh, or whatever. Better for them and better for society. It leads to plenty of good outcomes. There's new evidence coming out in the research all the time, very much unlike self-esteem. Childhood self-control predicts all manner of successes in adulthood. Self-esteem, not so much. Self-control, yes. Uh, people with good self-control do actually get better grades. They're more successful in their work uh, after they leave school. They earn higher salaries. Lower self-control makes you more vulnerable to being unemployed. Uh, people with good self-control really have stronger, better, longer-lasting relationships. Other people trust them more, like them better. People with good self-control are more popular. They have more stable, lasting friendships. People with high self-control also, it's, they're not miserable. It's not like they're being this Puritan doing their duty and suffering through, I've got to have discipline. No, they're actually happier, uh, partly because they have less stress in life. I say one of the best ways to reduce stress in life is to stop screwing up and making problems for yourself. Uh, people with low self-control are more prone to screwing up in that way. They do things they're sorry about, uh, they act impulsively, uh, and in that way they, they create further difficulties for themselves. Good self-control reduces that, reduces stress, enables one to uh, feel better on a moment-to-moment on a -moment basis even. People with high self-control are better adjusted. Both their mental and their physical health are better. Uh, with uh, physical health, uh, I suppose you could say the ultimate outcome is living longer. Now, it's interesting, at one point psychologists began to wonder, does anything in psychology and, and personality contribute to people actually living longer? dying later. So uh, they, the first thing they studied was intelligence, because uh, that's one of psychology's major topics. And uh, yes, uh, smart people do live a little bit longer than dumb people, uh, I suppose for some obvious reasons. Um, but then they started looking at other traits, thinking, what else can we find? When they discovered self-control, or conscientiousness as it's called in some uh, circles, um, that just sort of took over as a much bigger effect than everything else. Uh, so people with good self-control do indeed live significantly longer than people with sort of poor self-control. Uh, I think there are multiple reasons contributing to this. Uh, people with good self-control don't smoke as many cigarettes, they don't do as many stupid things, uh, they don't uh, drink too much, they don't take as many chances, they behave better. People with uh, good self-control commit uh, fewer crimes, they're less likely to be arrested, uh, they're like, less likely to engage, engage in uh, domestic violence or abuse. They're less likely to be prejudiced. So all these things show that people with high self-control do better, uh, are better people, uh, enjoy life more, and actually live longer.